So you see my screen come up. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, as I mentioned, the topic today is let E go. <laughs> let go. Yeah, I heard it from uh, the people who review the, the book. There's a book come out. Ego is the enemy. <laughs> and uh, there's um, the editors yeah, in Thailand, they pick up the book and review that sometimes let go is about how you deal with this letter E always beside that. I would like to start from this. Why we don't like people with lots of ego? <laughs> yeah. And maybe uh, from time to time, maybe not every day, that there'll be the moment that our ego corner in some situation. Yeah. And sometimes we don't like ourselves also. <laughs> in some moment that, no, I should not be like that. And why we don't like those people or even those situations with ourselves. Yeah, so that's some general thought. Sometimes people with a lot of ego, you can feel it. Too confident in their ideas and do not listen to others. Right, we are social being, and we need to give and take. If anyone only give, give, you know, just do this, do that, and they never take anything from anyone, gonna be difficult, right? So hard to work with as a team, and it's easy that that person might create atmospheres of conflict, politic conflict you know, happen all the time. So it's not desirable, right? It's not good to have too much ego. And let's take a look back to how this term start. So from uh, psychoanalysis, I'm sure many ones of you with education or therapist, <laughs> Yeah, we know about this. It's not perfect, but that's what we learned when we were young. Me also in Thailand, we learned this. It ego, super ego. So this is from Sigmund Freud. It is a set of uncoordinated instinctual design. Yeah, uncoordinated instinctual design. So in a sense, Mm, sometimes uh, human can have kinds of why animal behavior, not tame one, but why. And we feel like, wow, that's not a decent human being. So that is it. Ego, the original meaning is in the middle. Yeah. Ego is the organized, realistic agent that mediate in the middle, right? Between the instinctual desires of the it and the critical superego. And superego play the critical and moralizing role. Yeah, I hope I get the right explanation. <laughs> we can discuss more during the Q and A. So some there are famous picture they use as the carriage with a horse. So it like a horse, unconscious instinctive pleasure principle. Ego, like the guy who control the horse, rational decision maker, reality principle, and then super ego control its simple and pursue it ego moral. Yeah. So yeah, the boss at the back, the carriage, 
but need to take care ego well. Yeah. And yeah, we can call ethics, we can call morality. So what is ego in Buddha teaching? Is there a place in Pali Canon? Buddha touched on this. It ego, super ego. Yeah. You might heard this term. Atta and anatta. Yeah. Atta uh, is Pali term means self. Like the self. Yeah. Inside. <laughs> and then anatta non-self yeah i'm sure that at cmc sometimes the buddhist scholar they talk about the they call trilaksana or the three universal characteristic anicca tukha anatta we will touch on that later but we would like to see this part of ego of us so the term self in Buddha teaching or Atta, comparing to non-self. Um, you know, I will say from my perspective that if we not enlightened yet in this lifetime, uh, the process of non-self is kind of uh, super mundane that, yeah, we will get there. <laughs> but not so soon that we become non-self. And if anyone gonna achieve non-self state, that is enlightened person. No more anger, no more greed, no more hatred. Uh, not that simple to overcome overnight. Take some time. So if we're still alive and we're not enlightened yet next month or next year, we need to deal with the self that is still with us. So self in this context is neutral in the way that if we can manage it well, it's good. If we cannot manage it well, it causes trouble. Like the term ego, that original meaning is neutral. But in the modern context, ego is kind of, you, you should not have ego. <laughs> yeah, but actually, Ego is like a sense of that's who I am. That's who I am. So there's a term that expands from the term atta self that if we can manage atta or the cell well, it becomes confident. And as a person, we need confidence. Yeah in doing anything to be successful. We need confidence, but self with too much self-centered character, it becomes self-ego. Can you follow me? Self-confident, yes, it's good. Self-ego, that your ego is, is balloon. <laughs> and then I'm the only one who always make it right the red is stupid or, yeah, that is self-ego. Self-confidence is essential to deliver a good result. Yeah, we need, we need self-confidence. So if we manage ego well, guide them with uh, self work that I'm worthy and done thing good in my life or not look down on, on oneself. Self-confidence is good, but over self-confidence might fall into self-ego. Especially, you know, anyone want to do thing to be successful, want to contribute to something better, greater. But when you succeed more, yeah, I think that what Dr. Stephen Covey said, nothing fail like success. Yeah, nothing fail like success. That once you become successful, and if you are not mindful enough, that success prepare you 
to fail <laughs> because you kind of careless about thing that keep moving, thing that keep going on, nothing feel like success. So self-confidence is good. Over self-confidence is not good. So we need, we need self-reflection to curb our potential rising self-ego and develop personal humility. Yeah, if we really see the truth, who we are in this big universe, what we can do, what we cannot, we will feel humble by that. Like the way one of the most genius guy, Einstein, he feel humble how the universe work. And he did not criticize the unknown factors in the universe. He said, I just don't know. I just don't know how it works. But do not try to tell that I'm not an atheist or I don't uh, respect, you know, that greatness in the universe. He said, no, I just don't know. So I have this for you. <laughs> I do some research. Cell ego will say, I am perfect. I'm always right. No one is greater than me. Self humility will say, I'm not perfect. Yeah, I'm not, not yet. If you're enlightened and then no more trouble to yourself and anyone, that's close to perfection. I'm not perfect. I might be wrong. There are many things I can learn from others. That is the wise of humility. You know, at this moment, when you are calm, when you are peaceful, it's not difficult to understand, right? I'm not perfect. I might be wrong. There are many things I can learn from others. But if any day you are in the heated argument about something, about some opinion, hmm, maybe not so easy <laughs> to remind yourself, I'm not perfect, I might be wrong. There are many things you can learn from others because at that moment you want to prove something, which if you're confident, is good. But if you too much, and no space to listen any feedback. That is not good. I like the quote that they mentioned on the review of the book. Ego is the enemy. Humility is the best friend. <laughs> yeah. So if you can kind of, okay, ego, I know you, but not lie me, not mislead me again. Humility help me support me to know what else I can do, who else I can learn from. So today I would like to share with you and we can discuss more about it. It's not uh, so simple <laughs> to let ego go. Yeah, if we're not enlightened yet, we still have, I still have, yeah, more or less depend on the day but keep watching it, you know, like have some, like a light spotlight on it. So make them shine a little bit <laughs> on daily basis. Two step, number one, understand the concept of three universal characteristic. Yeah, we call this parayati, mean theory, theoretical understanding understand the concept of three universal characteristics. Number two, practice meditations and mindfulness to realize the three universal characteristics. And today I will clarify the difference between meditation and mindfulness too, and how it works in our daily life. Yeah, step one, how to let Ego go. <laughs> Understand the concept of the three universal characteristics. 
Uh, is there anyone right now that you heard about this before? Anicca, Tukka, Anatta. Can you type number three in the chat box? Type number three. Yeah, I heard about it. Impermanence, uh, sufferings, you know, and then Anatta. Okay, so I see. Barry, number three, Phil, number three, Sophie from Thailand, <laughs> Sanja too, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is a very powerful Dharma, uh, not too easy to see it on the daily basis, but if you are mindful enough, you will see it. Buddha talk about these three universal characteristics, anicca, dukkha, and anatta. What is that? And how this thing will, will work with our ego? Because our ego will try to have it opposite. <laughs> yeah, our ego want it. If you are uh, like a richest person in the world, you want it to be as long as you can. <laughs> or if you are, sorry. Let me someone come. Yeah. Ego will like it to be permanent. Ego don't want to feel suffer. <laughs> you could want to entertain I'm happy I'm good all the time and ego want to attach to that success as a self so when we understand the reality like this is the wall that is always there or it's like a mountain it's always there if you hit it you get pain <laughs> you get pain Buddha talk about this three universal characteristic as anything in the world, anything, you name it, anything in the world, except pure Dharma, or we call Buddha nature that has no definement. Okay, I will try to slow down. Anything in the world, including our cell, including our thought, anything is under this law, except the Buddha nature that has no more definement. Yeah. Can you follow that? Yeah. So what is that? Nothing is permanent. The building we are living is not permanent and it's keep changing. The weather, the government, <laughs> um, social economic system, it keep moving. And it lasts one year. Yeah, last now almost two years. Uh, we see the biggest impermanent show in the world with COVID-19. Everything you think is reliable, it's not there anymore. It's gone. <laughs> Anicca, that's number one. So if you understand this, what, what you will attach to balloon your ego is not stable, it will be gone. And you might fail. You might be in trouble. Number two, Dukkha. And today I put the term hidden suffering because ego try not to look at that part. Yeah. But in reality, any success lie the next failure. Any failure can lie the next success also. It's hidden. So in every corner of life, you can suffer more or less 
with more mindfulness, suffer less. Less mindfulness, suffer more. What is that here that's suffering? You stand, you feel good. Oh, I relax. This and that. You stand too long, you want to sit, right? And you sit, you feel, oh, I feel good. So sitting is happiness. You sit too long, you want to lie down. You lie down too long, you want to stay. You know, it keeps hidden. And we need balancing in this. This is just physical. You can imagine um, something more challenging like relationship, like equalities in workplace or among the kids or it's a bit tricky how you suffer not too much and avoid the hidden suffering that might hit you the next corner. Yeah, that's why I said it's not so simple to see. And the last one, non-self, anatta. Yeah, anatta. No matter what well, no matter what fame or anything we gather, one day it's gone. <laughs> we come from the nature, we back to the nature. Yeah. So what will really live is any goodness you have done that in your mind, then that goodness in the mind of many people. And that is something that connect with the Buddha nature, right? Kindness, goodness, it's not your bank account, it's not your big title in the company or government. It's all gone, you know, some people die and no one talk about that person anymore. And someone who die and never die because they deliver something to be remembered that go beyond self, yeah. Yeah, we can practice more. And then uh, if you have any question about those explanations, please jot down. I'm ready to discuss. Yeah. Once we understand the concept, yeah, we need to practice yeah, to really realize it. To know is one thing, to be is another. Yeah. We know meditation is good, inner peace is good, but without continued practice, we lost it. And sometimes we even feel like not to do meditation. <laughs> if uh, you're not feeling God, you're gonna have a good one. No. So that's why we keep, we need shower, keep it like a habit. Practice meditation, the Pali term is Samadhi and mindfulness Sati to the light, the three universal characteristic. Hmm, what is that? I, I mentioned in some of my talk at CMC that now in the West, the term meditation mindfulness start to be overlapped. But in Pali scripture, they have two different terms to call it and have a different meaning. In the, the Noble Eightfold Path, starting with right view, Samatiti. We will lie up Samma Sankapa until the last two, Samma Sati and Samma Samati, which is right mindfulness and right meditation yeah, or right concentration. So in general concept, meditation is supposed to go deeper. Yeah, you can imagine the paper, uh, the magnifying glass and the sun. Mindfulness is you move that magnifying glass over the paper. Yeah, that is sati. Try to be more mindful. And then samadhi, you move that magnifying glass to the focal point. So in deep, deep meditation, you realize something. Wow, I never see that. It decades of experience, but I never see that. I see it today in my super silent time. So to really let ego go, that you can let 
go when thing upsetting when thing not happen the way you want you need daily meditation meditate to see a uh, realities of yourself yeah you remember that chart i'm perfect i'm not perfect i'm always right i might be wrong i can learn from others and then oh i am the greatest one something like that when you are quiet you will see oh <laughs> Sometimes I'm still like I do things stupid in the way that I'm not happy with myself. And yeah, that person is bad in a very heated time when you talk with them, but oh, they take care of their family or they do some certain thing that we can appreciate. When you are calm down, when you slow down, you will see better. Yeah, like the analogy I use a lot when I teach meditation, the glass of water and some colors. Put the glass down. Let everything sink down to the bottom. Not let any color. Red one when you get angry. Blue one when you feel sad. Green one when you feel unhappy about someone take advantage. Blind you from the beautiful rose around the glass. Let things settle and you see it clear. When you see it clear, any person, any situation, especially yourself in each situation, you are wiser. And you will be more aware of this chart. Then the next step in the practice, sorry, encounter real life situation with mindfulness and wisdom yeah so when you open your eyes with a sense of calmness with a sense of humility and feel good you know sometimes that gentle awareness light and gentle feeling it come with the, the sense of i don't want to harm anyone i don't want to uh, encounter anything to criticize other people. It is just like a uh, that even if you gravitate toward more goodness, gravitate toward more wholesome uh, reaction. Like the the eyes is beautiful, so see more beautiful things. Something like that. Yeah. So when you have good meditation, when it come to real life on the meeting in the table, especially the situation that might hurt you or spark you to fight, something like that. That someone uh, squeed your ego, <laughs> try to make you feel bad about yourself, something like that. In the real life situation, try to watch and see if you have something good to say, say it. If you don't have one, be quiet. Yeah. And with that, practice, understand the concept of three universal characteristics. And two, practice meditation and mindfulness to realize the three universal characteristics. You will be able to let go more. Yeah. As I mentioned, it's not overnight, but you just feel better each day when you can see it and when you can, okay, today I let my ego not trouble me too much and I feel good about it. That's nice. <laughs> Satu.